What's good, Makan fam? My name's Henry. I'm George. And today we're here at Australian Meat Emporium out at Alexandria. So, I mean, we, we often do this quite frequently, but I don't know, every time we come here, we, we tend to spend about a few hundred dollars and it's just me and George today. <laughs> and we did it again. We spent 350 bucks. But I mean, if you look at our haul, yeah, got a fair bit of food. Got that tomahawk. Yeah, break it down for us. We have the lamb chops. We've got Angus Scotch fillet. We've got grass-fed Scotch fillet. We've got the MB5 Scotch fillet. And then of course, gold standard Wagyu MB9. MB9. And over here, we've got some pork belly. We'll make a little crackle. Uh, we've got some ribs, beef ribs which, we'll, which we're planning to cook low and slow. And uh, yeah, so that's all we got. But um, we'll flash you back to Georgia's place and then we'll go ahead from there. Right, guys we're back at my place what we're going to do here is we're going to build a fire so what we've got is we've got the fire lighters so we we love to use the redhead fire lighters they tend to last a little bit longer not to degrade quickly and over here we've got ah, the fire brand charcoal so this is a different kind of charcoal so this is made from the hardwood and we're going to give this one a shot so we, we like using these ones because they tend to the heat tends to last a little bit longer than usual in order to build this right what you need to do is first, you get some of your fire lighters. So pop a few of them out like so. And all we're gonna do is put that down. Get ourselves our charcoal. So we got our scissors, we're gonna open up the charcoal bag. Like so. Just one layer. Few of these charcoals out. So what we're gonna do is we create a hole. Now we need to start it. How do we start it? Get these fire lighters starting. So, in order to have the charcoal start burning pretty nice and hot, we need to break down the outer layer of the charcoal and heat it up from the inside. So what we're doing here is we're using the fire lighters to help break down the outside of the charcoal. And what you, in order to do this effectively, you need to build almost like a pyramid around the fire. But the important thing here is to not to choke the fire lighters. You still need some oxygen to come through. So we're back from our hall. <laughs> you can see now that we have the fire going right over there. Over there. And we've got all this meat here. So first and foremost, we have the pork belly here. Beautiful pork belly. We're gonna do a- Crackling. A crackling, but with an air fryer. And over here we've got the lamb four quarter chops, which we'll just do with some um, cumin. As you know, uh, lamb and cumin, and cumin. Mm. is the best way to go for That's lamb. The way. And now you can see over here, we also have some beef rib, which will go low and slow inside the barbecue next to the charcoal. We've never done this before, but we're gonna give that a go. We have this dry rub over here, which is it's supposed to be very popular. I've never tried it before. I've never tried it either, but um, it's going to be look exciting because it's got it's all nice and dark and black and it's just going to looking. turn that meat looking black. And then I don't know. Let's see how it turns out. Let's see how it turns out. I'm going to try it out. We'll show you how you guys. Uh, we'll show you guys how it's going to turn out. Right. And after the beef rib, we also have this dry aged tomahawk. Again, we usually, we usually try to cook bigger pieces a bit low and slow, but I think this one, because it's a little bit thinner, as you can see, can just go straight in the barbie. We've Tell us what we're gonna do here, George. Like right, all right. So here, we've got for you guys a bit of a comparison that we're gonna try and do. Yeah. So we know that one of the best steaks from, a, from the cow is a scotch fillet. Uh -huh. Now, this here, we've got a range of them. So at the bottom end, we do have the, just your everyday Angus beef scotch fillet. Yep. 
Then from there, we elevate a little bit. We've got the grass-fed beef scotch fillet. Yep. And then we go to the next level, and what we've got here is the Wagyu. We've got a rating there of MB5+, plus, but look at that marbling on this one, guys. Yeah. It's bloody amazing. And of course, at the very top end, we've got the MB9+, plus A5 Wagyu right here. <laughs> look at that marbling. That's amazing. Now they also do sell the, uh, the MB12 at a, the Meat Emporium, but we decided not to go that part <laughs> today, only because uh, we want more meat. We've tried this before, yeah, and we, we know that there is a significant difference, 100%. but we're gonna show you guys yeah. the differences, and we're gonna show you guys what, fla what different flavors come out of the different steaks. That's it, yeah. All right, so let's get preparing. What do we want to start off with? I guess let's start the pork belly. Let's start with the pork we'll belly. Get that in the We'll get that in the air fryer and show you how it's all done. All right, let's get it done. All right guys, so in order to prep this pork belly, we want to try and draw as much moisture out as possible. So that way we get that nice crackly skin on top. So generally what we, what we usually do is just poke the skin with a knife. You don't want to get it deep so that it goes through the meat, but you just want to go through that fat cap. I'm going to poke heaps of holes through it, but you can see that. And now that you can see it's all holes here and there, we're gonna go in with the salt. So it doesn't really have to be any special salt, but the salt, what it does, it just draws out as much moisture, uh, it draws up any moisture found in the skin or in that fat layer. So you wanna rub that in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it sit for a little bit. And that's gonna draw out more moisture. Then before we chuck it into the air fryer, we're gonna give it a bit more of a dab to pull out the rest of that moisture and then we'll throw it in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chuck it in there at 200 degrees and we're gonna run it at 15 to 20 minutes and after that we'll check on it and see how it's going. If it needs more time we'll give it five minute intervals after that and yeah we'll hopefully we get our good crackling. Beep. Open up this bad boy. Chuck her in. Should be good to go. So now we're gonna prep our beef ribs Again, don't give us hate because this is going to be the first time we do this, especially with this uh, with this big bark rub. And then the first thing we're going to do is just try and draw out as much of that moisture in there. Now, usually with ribs, they come with a silver lining on the back, and I think this one's already been peeled. Now, any excess fat, you kind of want to trim as well. So. All that there is not required. You want a little bit of fat, but you don't want massive chunks of it. So, whew, this is a very, very peppery rub. You can smell that straight off the bat. Um, but from what we've read online, we're just gonna dab this dry and we're gonna apply generously. So the plan of this is actually, we're gonna get it under the grill. We're gonna wrap it in foil and just have it next to the coals on the cold side or in the warm side. And hopefully that just cooks through. But yeah, let's go ahead and apply this ge Ooh, generously. <laughs> I'm gonna rub that in. Then we'll do the back. You don't wanna waste this rub. She is pretty packed. All right, so we're gonna let it rest for 15 to 30 minutes. All right, so now Prep the tomahawk. We're just gonna do this nice and simple. Um, it's gonna be salt and pepper, and it's just gonna be thrown straight on. The bone here, I'll usually wrap that with a bit of aluminium foil just so it doesn't burn. All right guys, 15 minutes is up. Let's go check on our pork belly. Woo, look at that. So you can see already that the, the crackling is already starting to form, oh. but the color's not all there yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in, Set that for another six minutes this time. Okay, so now we've got our beef, our tomahawk. I'm just gonna dab it dry again. I'm just gonna go in with a bit of cracked salt and cracked pepper, but we'll go in with the pepper first and just be generous with this because it is a big cut of meat. The fat, when it starts to render, will start drawing it all off. <clears throat> so you just wanna make sure that every part of this is coated generously going with the salt. 
can tell already it's gonna be quite delicious flip that around and do the same on the other side all right aluminium foil now at the very end just before we serve it ooh, doggy just before we serve it at the very end uh, we will sear the bone but yeah that's our product there so if you want to follow me to the barbecue We'll chuck it on the hot side first to give it a sear on both ends. So we'll give it two minutes on both sides and we'll chuck it on the cold side and kind of let it bake. But yeah, let's go. That is the exact sound you want to hear. Oh, it's very hot. So give it two minutes there and we'll give her a flip. Okay guys, so we're going to start now with our scotch fillets. We're going to start with the very basic of the basic and we're going to follow the exact same procedure as we did before. We're gonna cut it open, get rid of the moisture, salt and pepper both ends, chuck it on the barbie. So we've had a few minutes in on the one side of our dry aged beef. Now what we're expecting here is a clear, very caramelized crust on the one side. Let's see. That is exactly what we're looking for. Look at that, guys. That is perfect. You can see how charred it is. Oh, it's smelling so good as well. So now we'll chuck that in for another, another few minutes before we move it over uh, to your cold side and it'll cook slowly. All right, guys. So over here, we have our Angus beef. <clears throat> and you just want to compare that to our grass-fed beef over here. So all very good quality cut meats, but you can see there, you can see the marbling difference there actually. I'll just get rid of the salt and pepper if you can see that. Um, the marbling through the meat here, and you got less of it here on our um, on our grass fed. But yeah, they both should say should they both should taste pretty good. So we can chuck them straight on now. So let's just do this one and this one over here. Um, we'll get it right in the center area here. So that one there was our grass-fed beef. And this one here, I'll get it direct on coals. That one there is our, uh, our Angus. And while we're here, let's just have a check on our uh, tomahawk. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's get that on our cold side. So now we're going to prep the Wagyu. You got the MB5 here versus the MB9. Uh, your MB5 is at $95 a kilo, whereas your MB9 is at $157 a kilo. So obviously these ratings are based on how much fat is actually marbled through the cuts of beef. To my eye, you can see that this is a lot more marbled than that. It's just the density of all that marbling. Look at it versus this one here. Oh, they're both going to be really good melt in your mouth flavors so beautiful okay guys so we've got our meat searing there just going to give it a flip Ooh. look at that that's exactly what i want to see boom baby boom that's the mb5 guys Look at that. Alright guys, you can see here we've got one piece falling off, which will get all the boys to try. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Sweet. It's sweet. Wow. Sweet. The texture, you're right. It is a little bit more chewy than usual. Yeah. But there's so much beefy flavor in it. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. <laughs> beefy flavor, dude, is right. Beefy flavor. Got a more smokier flavor, too. All right, guys. So that's the MB9 prepped. You can see how much marbling there is in that meat. Like, honestly, it's falling apart in my hands. Look at that. 
Jeez Louise. All right, let's get this on the barbie. All right, guys. What we've got here, looks like the steaks are pretty much done. So we'll take off the grass-fed beef first, and we're going to let that rest. And this is your normal Angus. Wow. Now we've got our tomahawk. Ooh, damn. Just gonna let that rest. Try age, baby. Alrighty. It's a little bit overcharred, but these steaks are done. We're just gonna bring it across, hopefully not drop anything. Boom, and boom. Let that rest. All right guys, here comes the defining moment of cutting it up. So we've let the normal Angus rest for a little bit while. So we're gonna start with that. Cooked it at a medium here. That looks amazing. I'm gonna give this one a try. Mmm. It's got such strong beefy flavor. Not as tender, but still, still so good. Do not skimp on this, guys. This is the most flavorsome part right here. And I'm gonna give this to Mr. Henry. Henry, Ooh, what do we got? Here's the Angus. Let's go, guys. It's just melting in my mouth, man. So good. But look at that, guys. Medium, medium red to medium. That's beautiful right there. Let's move on to the grass-fed. So, now what we've got here is we've got the grass-fed beef. Let's cut into that. So, there's a line here that you just want to follow. Cut that out. <clears throat> now we've got the eye. Look at this. Oh, man, it's like butter. We've cooked that a little bit over, but that's okay. I'm sure the flavor is gonna, still gonna be amazing. All right, let's give this one a shot. Mmm. This one has a, has a more subtle beef flavor than Angus. Still great though. And this is a special Scotch fillet. This is the MB5. Wow, okay. Just from that alone, I know that this is much more tender. And we cooked that perfectly there. Look at that. Amazing. Oh, look at all that. Now, let's cut this one up and let's give this one a try. So this is the MB5 Scotch fillet. So it's got a lot more marbling through the meat. And even just cutting it through, I can already tell this is just a lot more tender than the other two. Like a significant amount. Look at that. We'll give this one a try. Oh, yeah, this is the one. With this one, you get that strong beef flavor that is similar to the Angus, but the difference is texture. It's much more melt in your mouth. You got that awesome fat layer, which is just so good. I don't know how else to explain it. Excuse me. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Look how juicy that is, man. It's melting literally in my hand, between my fingers. <laughs> this one, you put it in your mouth, it literally starts to melt, like it's melting away. So good. You got Cameraman over here. Mm. Nice. Whoa. All right, guys. Holy. <laughs> Henry's still reminiscing of having that flavor bomb from the Jeez. MB5. But we're moving on to the MB9, guys. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to give a nice, easy slice through the middle. Oh, look at that. Beautifully cooked. That's perfect right there. That's exactly what you're looking for. Nice, medium rare. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut straight through here. Look at that. Beautifully medium rare. But look at this. I'm gonna give this one a try. Oh, yeah. Melt in your mouth. Strong flavors. Henry, you salted that this one perfectly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And the cook is just amazing. Look at that. <clears throat> Beautifully medium rare. So I'm just gonna chime in here, because I can't resist. Look at that. <laughs> it's still like, it's not like fully melt in your mouth, or fully melt in your fingers type, but there's still texture in it as well. Gotta love that, man. Oh. Juice in every single bite. It's so juicy. <laughs> it's perfect medium rare. 
I love that they're still true to it and it's not just full like boom, disappears in your mouth. Mm. <laughs> it's so good. And the last but not least steak that we've got here is we've got the tomahawk. Now there is a certain way that you need to cut this and that is you go from the bottom, you find the seam, and you cut straight down and you want to follow that along the bone. Look at this. And this is what you, this is your final product here. You've got this amazing tail that we're going to leave there. We're going to cut through the seam here. And we've got the eye. This is where the massive flavor is going to come from right here, the eye. This one here. Oh yeah, this is tender. Look at that. I'm barely even pulling it, it just falls apart. Definitely not as smell in your mouth as the MB9, but it has, a, it feels like it's got a stronger beef flavor than even the Angus. It's dry aged, bro. Mm. Mm. And you can taste some of that funkiness. Yeah. 100%, try it, give it a shot. Yeah, see it not as fall apart. But I do like that. Mm. It's like very rich butter almost. Mm. It's like kind of cheesy. You do get a bit of that cheesiness coming through it. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's not melty, it's not as melty, but it's still kind of melty. <laughs> I actually like that texture. Uh, come through here, good sir. Come listen to this, ready? Jeez, oh, bro. That is a, some serious crackle right there. Oh, that's beautiful, look at that color. All right, so the method of cutting this is, is you want to turn it upside down. So what that will do, it will, it will give it a nice clean cut. And you will also be able to give, like be able to put some downward pressure to cut through that crispiness with this cut. Oh, wow, look at that. It's falling apart. But hear this. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, look at that. Oh. Beautiful. Ooh. Beautifully crispy. The pork is nice and tender. I want to give this one a bit of a try. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Look at that, smoking. <laughs> mm. That is just so amazing, that crunch is out of this world and it melts straight away. Does it? It doesn't linger. After you bite through that crunchiness, it just melts. And if you guys have had chicharron before, that top layer right now is like that chicharron. All right guys, we're gonna check out on our beef ribs. Oh, Henry, yep, these are tender. Wow, that's dense. All right, so we got that there. Let's see what we've got under here. Ooh. Oh, holy. Look. At that. I think if we want to keep it in for another hour, um, another 20 minutes or two. I reckon we chuck it on the fire. Yeah. Finish it on the fire, give it a sear and a proper coat. All right, here we go. On the fire for the final sear. All right, all right guys. The ribs, I think we're ready to take off. All right, so let's get these off. Look at that. Thank you, Henry. I've always seen Salt Bay do it, but let's see if we've got it right. All right, here we go. Woo! Look at that. Clean rib. All right, guys. So we've got the bone out, one of the bones out. We're gonna cut straight through that section right there. Whoa. Damn, boy. Woo! Holy. Look at that medium rare. You've got that beautiful outside section. Got that beautiful crust, got that tender insides. So juicy. I think it doesn't need a bit more time though, Henry. Yeah, I reckon it needed a little bit more time. A little bit more time. So we're gonna get this back on the grill. And see how we go. <laughs> I reckon like, to me, I think that's a bit, that's perfect. Like some people think that's under. I actually quite enjoy it like that. Look at it. Luscious, translucent, pink. Love it. Okay. Does need a bit more time. You can see that 
the ligaments or whatever they're called in here. Still haven't fully broken down, but I'll try that piece of the crust. Okay, lemony, herby, tangy. It's very balanced, that rub. Very, very balanced. Um, I got it from Meat Emporium. The salt, spices, sugar. Ah, yeah, sweetness comes through. There's a bit of brown sugar in there. Quite enjoy that. Very, mm. very nice. So I have to say, I've done a good job with these feeds. I reckon we're going to start doing more of a, a lockdown series. I yeah, think. we're going to have a lockdown series for you guys because uh, if you guys don't know, here in Sydney, we're just going into a two week lockdown. We're about to go into a two week lockdown. Um, and it's going to be pretty isolating for all of us because we can't visit each other. We can go outside to exercise, but that's pretty much it. We're still going to give you guys a video each week representing like all these different cool food ideas. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a couple of ideas of what we're going to do, right Henry? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, keep following us. Keep following our YouTube. See what we've got up, up and coming. We're going to have some amazing content for you guys. But thank you so much for following us here on this journey. This was a mini porium exploration, if you will. We've got a little bit of everything, showing you a little bit of what they have. But yeah, excited to see what's coming up. That's it. Guys, you just remember if you enjoy this content, remember to like and subscribe. Makan.oz, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Instagram. And yeah, we'll keep pumping out the content. For our Sydney viewers, yep. stay safe. We know it's going to be a bit of a hard time at the moment for the next two weeks, but stay happy, stay safe, and yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy our content during that time, and uh, we'll see you in our next video. Peace out. See you guys.